Hey, everybody. My name is Ashley Garth, founder of Garth Media, and I am here with Marcus Knight. I actually met him at a networking event a couple of months ago, and I love this energy, and we just kind of clicked. So I dropped in his DM, and I was like, would you like to collaborate? <laughs> and he was like, of course. So he is a he's a connector. Like I said, he's a, a digital star, and he also has a photography business that he's getting off the ground right now. And we'll talk about how we're going to partner for his photography business later on. But Marcus, go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Yes. Thank you so much for having me on, Ashley. Hello, everyone. My name is Marcus Knight. I am a recent college grad of last year um, here in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, and now I get to actually work at my alma mater as a full-time um staff member in our office of the president but even outside of that i get to do a lot of content creation things a lot of photography a lot of digital marketing a lots of really fun side quests side hustles if you will um so i'm excited yeah. to be here excited to talk about all things remote and the balance and everything else a lot of us now work remotely and I thought it would be appropriate just to have a conversation about it because we we paint a picture and it's it's fun. You know, we see people out at the beach with their laptop and it's like, oh, the remote <laughs> remote life is it has its ups and downs. So let's talk right. about that today. And Marcus, the first question I want to ask you, well, first of all, how long have you worked remotely? All right. So I I am really new to the game. So I've been so used and conditioned to having a simple schedule at college, in middle and high school. Um, and so right now what I'm doing with different organizations around Nashville, I've probably been in a remote position for now since the beginning of the year. So it's really only been maybe a month or so that I've even been in remote. Perfect. And that's why I feel like you're the perfect person for this interview, because I've been working remotely for eight years now. And mm -hmm. I would I want to chat about our different perspectives, because in the beginning, I was just finding my groove and it took me a while to figure that out. So you guys that are watching, whether you've been working remotely since the top of the year or for a decade, we're yeah. all going through the same thing and we can learn together. So. Right now, Marcus, what has been the most significant benefits and challenges so far of, of working remotely? So I'll, I'll answer that question by tackling both at the same time. Um, I use a quote that a powerful keynote speaker once said, his name is Simon T. Bailey. And he said, there's a certain power in being a slasher. And by that, he means being multidimensional, multifaceted, being this slash this slash that. So nicknaming it as being a slasher. And I think the benefit as well as the greatest challenge for being in a remote space is that you are building the life that you want. And it takes a lot of work. It takes energy. It takes calculated risk. It takes um, a lot of different areas of focus and expertise. And so I think being able to be that multi-dimensional person, I can have my side business or my, my hustle over here, but I can also have a nine to five here. And I can also have a corporate thing here. Like being able to be multi-dimensional in that sense, I think has been one of the, the great unlocks for me in the past couple of months. Um, I'm raised by boomers. <laughs> and so they grew up with this kind of thinking that, you know, you are loyal. You stick to one job, you do it for 30, yeah, 40, right. 50 years, literally, and then you retire, and then that's it. <laughs> but millennial and Gen Z generations would argue that it's not enough to just be one lane for the rest of your life. We want to be able to do multiple things. We want to be almost like a, a metaphorical octopus, if you will, and have mm. tentacles in all sorts of different areas. So I think yeah. that's probably the biggest benefit and challenge of being remote. Yeah, and and I'll add to that, I do love having the flexibility of being able to do both. 
But time management for me has been something yeah, that I've is. really had to figure out. Because look, if you're working on a corporate gig, you're getting a salary. And I also have a corporate job, guys. I work in tech as a marketer um, for a software company in Portland. So what I've learned, Marcus, is I have my agency and I have my team. Yep. I work on our stuff. I get up early in the morning. So, and I may have client calls early in the morning. So between right. maybe seven and eight thirty each day, I'm working on Garth Media stuff. And right. then my nine to five is my remote corporate gig. Exactly. And sometimes I don't get done with my Garth Media stuff. So guess what I'm doing in the evening? I might have to come back and finish. And I, I try <laughs> to be done at least by six. Like that's my cutoff day time when I just want to close my laptop. So right. um just time management, I say, would be the best way to really manage both. Um, but it's a game changer when you finally yeah, realize is. how to do it. And people say, you know, you got to do what you have to do in order that you can do what you want to do later. Mm -hmm. And when you first, it's going to be a, a huge risk to take. It's going to be a huge shift in life. It's going to be unexplainable to a lot of people who are not used to living that lifestyle. Some people will think that you are crazy for attempting to do a corporate job and a remote job at the same time. But having those different areas of expertises and being able to have that experience to add to your resume and to add just to your life experience, that is going to open so many more doors and so many more opportunities down the line because you have such a unique personality and a unique perspective that you can draw from. Companies, uh, companies want people that are entrepreneurial and they know that we have, most people now have more than one gig. I, I don't remember where I read this, but it was like 60% of millennials have a corporate job and a side gig. And I'm like, but do we even have a choice? Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what are we going to do? The cost um, of living is different these days. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's very different. Um, so, yes, I love that answer. Let's go to the next question. How do you think entrepreneurship has evolved um, since just the formation of so many new trends in technology? Mm. To be honest, I think it's simply a an access thing. I think the information, the product, the service, what have you, has always been there. And I think that's something that has stayed true throughout decades, throughout eras, what have you. But I think specifically just making things more accessible. I feel like before it was always, let's get boots on the ground. Let's, you know, market with, you know, guerrilla marketing strategies. Let's hang up a poster in every neighborhood corner. Like it was very much being able to impact your immediate space, which is great. It's great to have influence within the immediate circles that you inhabit, that you occupy. But with digital technology, it is simply so much more reach. It's so much more influence. It's so much more access to people who you normally would never come in contact with. I remember um, when I was in middle or high school, I started really getting into digital content and started making YouTube videos just as a hobby in middle and high school. And I'll never forget the first time that I had a comment on one of my YouTube videos. It was actually from a person in India mm. watched my video. And in my brain, I couldn't fathom that there was somebody in a continent so far away from me that had the same access to the same information the same influence, the same creation that I had created in America. And so I think if people can really tap into how can I have my niche, how can I have my lane, how can I have my um, unique selling point, but at the same time being able to cast your net far and wide to be able to attract unconventional customers. It's not just about your target audience anymore. It's about who's on the margins, who's on your, I don't know if I can reach them, but I'd like to try list. Yeah. Being able to reach out and be able to reach a lot of different people in a lot of different ways. Yeah. Now, I I think I have about 
10 years on you, but so the <laughs> difference between um, traditional marketing and now digital marketing, I was transitioning to marketing as traditional marketing was just becoming a thing of the past, like print, uh, yeah. billboards, TV, radio. Like we don't listen to the radio. We are streaming on Spotify and Apple. So I love that we're transitioning to this new space, but at the same time, guys, we cannot forget our traditional marketing. Maybe I think exactly. sometimes we get so caught up in building a brand on social that we, traditional marketing is telemarketing, picking up the phone. Like who does that? And I, right. I have even found a lot of people from a marketing standpoint, they think that they can scale a business just through digital marketing. It's it's a combination and it has to be diversified. Exactly. Um, so I love that answer. And I just wanted to add that digital marketing is wonderful, but all of our marketing needs to be diversified um, to really scale. So, yeah. All right, let's go to our next question. I want to know, Marcus, what does your tech stack look like? What are some of your digital tools that you use on a weekly basis? Um, I mean, I can't be a member of Gen Z if I don't say social media. Um, I think that has been one of the things that kind of catapulted me. Um, I also agree with what you said earlier about you know, digital marketing is not your only type of marketing that can benefit you. And I think that social media right now is a great introductory form of marketing for your brand, your business, your service product, whatever. Um, I think it's getting people off of social media is exactly. where the real gold nuggets are. And so one of the things that I really wanted to invest in over the last year was a website. And I wanted to make sure that I had a landing page that I could always send somebody to, to if they wanted to request me for a podcast spot, or if they wanted to request me to speak at a conference or a keynote, if they wanted to learn more about me, about my products, about my services, all of those things. I wanted to be able to have that infrastructure nailed down so that if Instagram, I don't know, goes on a rampage and Somebody mm -hmm. buys it out or it plummets to the ground like Twitter's doing right now. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> if something were to happen one day, I can still have that website. And that website also includes a mailing list. I feel like people need to know about mailing lists <laughs> because when everything goes haywire, you can still have a database, a record of people who are invested in you. And this is multiple clicks to get to a mailing list and sign that up. And so these are people who have taken time out to invest into your mission, your vision. And you want to keep track of that. I mean, it's great to have 20,000 Instagram followers, but also having 200 members on your mailing list is just as powerful oh. as powerful. And really it's that that's going to send you to the conferences, have your book be a bestseller, have your podcast be number one on iTunes. Like those are the things that are really going to help scale and not just see you on a screen and keep moving. Yeah. Now, are there specific apps? And I'm really wanting to give some examples. Are there some apps that you feel like you use for your business, like for your photography business? I'm thinking yeah. QuickBooks or do you use a CRM? What are those? Two? Yeah. So right now, just because I'm getting into it, I am learning a lot more about CRMs and what it means to really build relationships with people. So I'm a big amateur right now. I think right now I've been leaning into some of the all-in-one platforms um, that kind of do everything for you. And so right now I'm actually using MailChimp for okay. my email list. And then it also has a website builder connected to it. And so I'm really on the, the beginner side with having a mailing list, having a website, and then for all the things that I do in social media, I have like editing software on my laptop for all those things, um, as opposed to like a CapCut or InShot. Um, but I do use like Canva or Adobe for yes. Yes. Um, different graphics and thumbnails and things of that nature. So I want to make sure that I can get a good uh, 
foot in the door, as well as trying to learn more of the trades and learn more about different things that I can utilize as I grow, as I scale, as I learn um, and get better at this whole process. Yeah. Now, if you are not using Canva, I don't know where you've been. I don't um, know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Um, I love that. So if you're a creative, it's a very user-friendly graphic design platform. Um, and I feel for my, gra I say real graphic designers who have training, um, I'm not saying not to outsource, but if you really need something quick, you can do it on your own um, through Canva. And I'll add to that, Adobe is another good one for creatives. Exactly. My tech stack that I use, and this is something that I've added to the guide for mastering remote work in 2024. I've listed some um, software that I use weekly. And one of those things is Asana. It's a project mm -hmm. management tool that I use to communicate with my um, contractors. I also use a CRM called HoneyBook. Now this is more client facing. And I know a lot of photographers actually use this, Marcus. Yeah. I'm gonna send you my discount code. Um, <laughs> but with HoneyBook, it has everything in one place. I can send my invoices. I can, they have built in templates for contracts. Um, I can make them recurring invoices. If I want to have a one place where all of our messaging is together and I'm not searching through emails to find things because nobody has time for that. All of it's in basically um, just laid out in each station within HoneyBook. Exactly. Um, Flowdesk. I love MailChimp, but I use Flowdesk for my email marketing. Gotcha. I just, to me, Flowdesk is like Canva on steroids, but for email <laughs> marketing. I love that I template. That. I get that. <laughs> um, the only feedback that I've gotten from Flowdesk, it is very feminine. Like the the okay. templates kind of are, are girly. So if you yeah. had more of a masculine brand, yeah. it, it may not work. Um, you might have to do gotcha. a lot more customization, but I love those. And I'm going to talk about chat GPT. Yes. So, Come on, the app is on my phone. <laughs> I have the mobile app. It's on every laptop. Now, Chat GPT is not a weekly thing. It's a daily thing. It is okay? a daily thing for sure. Game changer. I'm like, what was how are we living before this? I mean, honestly, I would I would <laughs> argue people always say online that Google is the first search engine. YouTube is the second largest search engine, and then maybe TikTok might be the third largest. Mm -hmm. But I would argue that ChatGPT is slowly and surely rising to the top of that, like for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, and if you're not using AI, what are you doing? You're about to get left behind. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, I'm glad you said that. And I was, I wasn't eavesdropping, but I was at, um, I was at Soho, Soho earlier today. And I heard a woman, she was on a Zoom call, and I heard her say, I am just not, I haven't tapped into AI yet. I know that seems so weird, but I just, I don't really want to get into it. And I was just yeah. thinking, girl, why? <laughs> you don't want to save time? You don't right. want to enhance your own ideas? Exactly. Like, and especially with us working remotely and working corporate, Right. And doing our own thing, like time is money. So, yeah. So I, I like encourage, a, go ahead. I was going to say, I, I feel like a lot of times when you talk about people who want to start a separate business and want to work remote, want to be an entrepreneur and want to take a risk, want to take a step, the number one, and I guarantee you, if you ask 19 out of 20 people will say the one excuse that they don't do the thing is simply because they don't have time. And right. so any time that you can be more efficient with what you're doing and how you're doing it, the thing is artificial intelligence is just that. It's artificial. And so it's not taking the humanity out of what you're doing. It's not taking the personality, the flair, the nuance of what you're doing out of it. It's simply the artificial parts of your brand, your business, what have you. And so for you to be able to 
have shot lists and have emails and have, you know, content drafted and copy drafted, like being able to schedule those things out in record breaking time. I mean, all you have to do is really get information on how to be detailed with your prompts to chat GBT. But once you unlock that, yeah. once you learn how to do that, you are golden. Like you, that's your outsourcing, not having to get a whole team. If you're really like crunching by yourself, chat GPT is your outsource. Yeah, exactly. All right. Let's talk about emerging marketing trends for 2024. What are just a couple mm -hmm. that you're excited about? So I, we talked a little about, about AI, obviously. Um, I will say user generated content and here's why i say that i think a lot of times um businesses and brands and things of that nature they focus a lot on internal things about what they can do within their company to communicate their message well which is great that is amazing that's what marketing is for also i think people have understood that no one's going to know you better than the customer. No one's going to know your voice, your brand, your message better than the people who you serve. And so being able to invite them in in any way possible, I think people are going to really lean into that more. I think um, kind of along the same lines, I am so fascinated at influencer marketing as well, because every other video on TikTok I see is somebody who bought something from a TikTok shop and is trying to, you know, promote these different products, promote these different services and what have you. And I have a feeling that especially as we navigate down in Gen Z and Gen Alpha, all these things, as we keep going forward, people are going to gravitate towards these um, these brands that they know that their idols use, the people who mm -hmm. are their mentors, their role models. I saw this person on TikTok using it. That's why I'm going to go get it. Why do you think Stanley Cups are so dang popular? It's because every third person <laughs> on TikTok has a Stanley right. Cup. So and you got to be able to lean into like those different like I said before, untraditional ways mm -hmm. of marketing, of being able to invoke some sort of emotion or response or message that people are connected to, that people can easily grab. Yeah. And I tell my clients all the time, video, 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 like it's really, I don't want to say the only way, but the only way right now. So if you're scared to pull out your phone or like you said, partner with influencers, you're going to get left behind. Just like we were talking about, if you're not utilizing the AI video is very crucial for a business to scale and gain that trust and credibility and to saturate the market. So if you want to do just okay and just kind of coast, don't share any video. Don't, yeah. don't use video as a marketing tactic. <laughs> And to be honest, I, I have enjoyed the idea of influencer marketing so much so to where I've created templates for emails to send out to, I have a full list of maybe a hundred plus brands and companies that I use on a daily to weekly basis. And I send them emails at least nice. twice a year, basically saying, hey, I know you're trying to you know, reach Gen Z, reach different audiences. Um, maybe I speak from the perspective of a young person, from the perspective of a recent college grad, maybe the perspective of a person of color, but being able to tap into those different areas. And you'll be surprised. I've had ice cream companies. I've had um, pizza companies. I've had stationary companies. I've had, you know, service companies. I've had people reach out and give me free product, free service, because they know the impact of people being able to share their brand and their message via TikToks, YouTube shorts, Instagram reels, even videos on LinkedIn. Like mm -hmm. it, it's gotten to that <laughs> point where people are even doing video on LinkedIn to yeah. show their professionalism. So it's definitely 
a thing in progress for sure. Absolutely. I have one more question for you. Hmm. And so y'all, I'm I'm looking at a list of questions right now. And I want <laughs> I want the last question to be, what advice right now, since I know you've not been doing this long, but if you could give one piece of advice yeah. to entrepreneurs and business owners who are working remotely, what would that be? There are two sides, two sides to this answer. Number one, I don't want to say just take a risk I want to say take a calculated risk. So there's got to be a, a balance between taking a leap of faith, being able to be so secure in what you know your product or service will be, and being able to take a chance on that. You don't get a return on anything that you haven't invested in. And so being able to take that step, take that leap, I think is going to be very beneficial, especially if you've thought about it, if you've planned, not saying you have to have every T cross, every I dotted, but at least having some sort of structure to what you want the outcome to be. And then the second part of this answer, I would say, find someone in your field that is already doing what you would like to be doing, maybe five, 10 years down in the future and follow them. Now, I would say not to copy people, but kind of in a sense, you might want to copy just a little bit, just being yeah. able to see their habits, their practices, what kind of language are they using? What kind of events are they showing up at? How many people are they connecting with on a daily basis? How are they engaging with people online and yeah. offline? Being able to have some pinpointed mentors or some ideal models to focus after it's always going to be good for you to be able to expand your mind and to have the ability of thought. Um, and that's not going to happen if you're only communicating with people who are on the same level as you or below. You're only going to get stuck. And so yeah. making sure that you can take that risk, but also find you people who are already taking those risks. Yeah, we never should be the smartest one in the room. Exactly. And we hear that all the time. Like, if you are, reevaluate your circle and pivot, okay? You gotta go. You gotta get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So thank you, Marcus. Re working remotely, I know it can feel like we're in a silo sometime, but this brings me to the networking event that I'm hosting here on February the 8th yes. at Bag Lady Fry Joint. We work remotely, but we have to have some face-to-face -face interaction to really scale and to really get our name out there. So I would love for you guys to join. Um, I want to add the link. And Marcus is going to be working at the event as a photographer. Marcus, yeah. tell us, what, what type of photography do you enjoy and what type of clients are you looking for? So I have really, really been enjoying getting into the photography business. Um, I'm usually a an event photographer. Um, okay. And so any sort of gatherings, um, weddings, concerts, things of that nature. Um, I love being able to capture events um, and milestones in people's lives. And so those are the kind of clients I'm looking for. If you want some pictures taken, just let me know. Um, my website is www.marcusthenight.com and my Instagram, all the socials are Marcus the Night. Um, and I'd love to be a part of your memorable experience, but that's why I'm getting into it. I'm really, really excited about this meetup. It's going to be really, really fun. Yes. And we, it, there's going to be over a hundred entrepreneurs under one roof. So again, come and network with us. Also make sure you download the guide mastering remote work in 2024. And we'll see you guys next time. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you, Ashley.